Hi everyone, it's from Ro Phyllis. Let's travel to Paris of 1899, where we enter a world of romance and splendor in this musical mashup extravaganza, Moulin Rouge the Musical. Come with us as we take you to see the most undeniable star of the show, the set. From the iconic elephant to the windmill and so much more. We also had a chance to sit down with some of the cast. Moulin Rouge, the musical, comes alive at the Nederlander Theater, March 19th through May 14th. Joining us today are some of the leads in Moulin Rouge. I am so excited to be with Connor Ryan and Courtney Reed. Thank you for joining us. Good. Thank you for having us. You know, I have to say that for those that have not seen Moulin Rouge, which is hard to believe because it's been 20 years that it's been out, or for those that haven't seen it in a long time, tell us about the story. Well, at its core, it's an epic love story. And um, uh, you'll, you'll see two people from very different worlds and very different lives coming together. It's, it's, it's almost like a Romeo and Juliet of sorts. Um, but we have a bunch of stunning, amazing, talented artists that also come together as a community and like a family. You know, there's also a lot of dancing, a lot of acrobats, a lot of music. Was there any special training that you guys had to do outside of what you normally do? A little trapeze for you? <laughs> oh, actually, I did a little trapeze, a little trapeze. But this is the second show that I've actually flown in the air for, so I felt, I felt at home. So Moulin Rouge is also uh, more than a nightclub. Um, it's a state of mind. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I think you were you did you get a chance to see the set downstairs yes. inside, right? I absolutely. mean, I think it's really um, it's this, the the experience begins. I think as, as soon as you step into the theater before the the um, the story even really begins. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a very opulent, lush, um, sexy, uh, dangerous beautiful world and uh, we're so so excited to share it with you all is there a most memorable scene whether you guys are in it or whether it's something else you know tell speaking me. of the trapeze i think her, her number her her first number in the show is one of my favorite moments in the show it's gorgeous yeah diamonds are a girl's best friend i mean it, it's pretty iconic yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite my favorite moment actually probably even in the musical and in the film is Come what may, it, if you if you know it, if you're a fan of the film, then you really know that tune. And actually, the first time he sang that to me in the studio, I just couldn't stop crying, just because I think I have such an emotional attachment to that song. And then also, he performs it so beautifully and honestly, and um, it's just so easy to fall in love with this pretty pretty Aww. little face Aww. every day. Back at you. <laughs> oh, for the younger generation that wants to get into this business, what advice do you have for them? Oh, follow oh. your dreams. Yeah, if, if you if you want something, don't don't back down. Just go for it and be yourself. Yeah, and to piggyback off of what you're saying, be yourself and 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 try to be the best version of you. I, I think um, because this business is not just about uh, your talent. It's it's about who you are as a human being and, and spreading your love and your light in the same way that we do on the stage. We're we're hired to tell the story, but we're also hired to have to evoke an emotion from the audience when they leave. And I think you, as a human, um, spreading your love and light is important, and people will remember that, and they'll want to cast you in other shows because of it, because of your true heart. Thank you again for joining us, and can't wait for opening night. Yeah, we'll see you there. Thank you. We'll see, see you there. there. This is a real treat. We are with the producer of the show, Bill Dimashki. Right. Bill Okay, Dimashki. I'm making my own words up <laughs> at this point. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So are there challenges that go into um, adapting a film for the stage? Yes, there, there are challenges because, um, I mean, Moulin Rouge is a, a film that the people who love it, love it deeply. Right. Um, it's a film that is 20 years old now, if you can believe that. It feels like it just came out a minute ago to me. Um, and um, I think that's always the thing, like how much of the movie and then how much do you reinvent? That's the main question. And Baz Luhrmann, who the directed and created that, he actually was an amazing kind of like guide for us in that. He, he really didn't give us that many instructions, but he gave us a few very clear ones. He said, make it your own, 
don't just put the movie on stage, like don't just take the words and like re try to put it on stage because it won't work because the tools of the theater are different than the tools of movie making. And when I made this 20 years ago, it, it was made in the moment and it felt fresh and new and the music was fresh and new. So please take advantage of the last 20 years of music that's been created. Um, the premise of the, of the show is that Christian, the composer, has written all the greatest love stories ever written, love songs ever written. And so we wanted to actually honor all the great big songs from the movie, but also include songs from the last 20 years. So you'll get Elton John and Come What May and Lady Marmalade, but you'll also get Katy Perry and Beyonce and Lady Gaga. So that's really the big change that we made. I read that there are over 70 pop songs. Yes. You know, we wanted people to feel like, you know, the music of the, of the last 100 years was actually represented in the film. And so sometimes it's a whole song and sometimes right. you'll hear just like one phrase from a song and, and but it, it's part of something that's mashed up. But yeah, there are I think 76 songs represented in the show. How do you think the audience not only experiences the story but brings their own life into the show? Um, well, I mean, in this moment right now, coming yep. out of the pandemic, um, I feel like um, anyone who decides to go to the theater is really making like a conscious choice. Like, I'm going to go because I want to feel that feeling that I feel that I used to feel when I used to go to see a live show. So, um, and our audience is invited to actually be the audience at the Moulin Rouge. You walk through the door and you are at the Moulin Rouge. And as an audience member, you are not at, to participate, meaning you're not going to be asked to get up on stage, but you are the audience for the performances that are happening at the Moulin Rouge. So I think it's a very um, active and engaged experience. Um, I think that we've spent a lot of time thinking about what it's like to feel a part of the Moulin Rouge, and so that, that's really a big difference. Well, I call the set like, you know, the main show at that point, right? Yeah. I mean, what you did to bring that house, how difficult was that to bring, you know, kind of some of the stuff that was in the film and then really, you know, set it up the way it was in the film, but still make it your own? Yeah, it was, I mean, we have the most talented design team. Uh, Derek McLean did the scenic, uh, Catherine Zuber did the costumes, Justin Townsend did the lighting, and then our incredible director, Alex Timbers, who also is from Chicago originally, you know, he's just the wizard. He's the wizard of like figuring out how to take the audience on an incredible, deluxe, maximal journey. And he was the one who said, the minute the doors open, the audience must feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going somewhere I've never gone before. And I, I do believe the show delivers on that. The fact that then you go on an emotional journey with the characters and you go on a, a story journey about people who are fighting for their show and they're there and fighting for the Moulin Rouge, I think that actually mirrors the life that we've just come through. I know it's hard to say, but do you have a favorite scene? It's, it's a, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the oldest of seven and it's like asking my mom who her favorite child yeah. is. But, um, but I mean, you know, it, it, I've been working on the show for a really long time. And so like it goes up and down, you know, like I'm like, oh, I really love that. I love so much. The opening of the second act probably is like, blows me away every time I watch it. It's called Backstage Romance. It's where I think the collision of story and dance and music and all of the craft of the costumes and this, like, it all just like collides in this most amazing way. Um, and it's um, really, really powerful and very exciting and uh, the work of everybody. I'll, I'll go to watch that if I'm near the theater in Midtown in New York or wherever I've been. I'll be like, oh, I'll just hang out another hour and go watch the opening of the second act because I just love it so much. Is there one thing that you want the audience to take away from the show? I would love the audience first and foremost, to have a great time. I want anyone who's going to the theater right now, choosing to go to the theater, to walk away and go, wow, that was really worth it. I'm so glad I'm back. And I'm so glad theater is back. Not just Moulin Rouge, but theater in general. So have a great time, have a thrilling night out, but I hope they also go and experience the romance and the love and the passion both of the story on stage, but of the people who made this show. Well, thank you so much thank you. again for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.